If you want to record video today, you probably reach for the same device that you're using to watch this video right now, your smartphone. But back in 2008, the iPhone couldn't record video yet, nor could the early Android phones. So that was out of the question. The flip camera and other similar pocket-sized video cameras were very popular, but with their cheap plastic fixed focus lens and lack of image stabilization, they were well known for producing shaky video that was difficult to watch. The video capability of digital still cameras was improving, but was still generally hamstrung by limited recording time, poor low light sensitivity, and even worse audio quality. So if you wanted to record decent quality video in 2008, you needed to get a real camcorder. And boy were there more choices than ever. Ranging from the last vestiges of early 1980s technology, to full HD video that still holds up well today. The last remaining analog Hi8 and VHSC camcorders had finally been discontinued, but were still available on clearance sale for those who didn't mind old technology and just wanted the lowest possible price. Santa tapes everything. Oh yeah. Hi Dad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What are you guys doing? What are you making? A cake. Wow. Please don't photographer us. Sony's Digital 8 format likewise had just been discontinued, but was still available on clearance for those who wanted the lowest price of entry into digital video recording. Hi Ben. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Welcome to the uh, bonfire. How were the waves? Terrible. Did you ride a long one? No. Nope. Didn't ride anything. Oh Sorry. well. Maybe next time. I hope so. And Mini DV was still a mainstream format, despite being on the market for over a decade, offering good quality digital video recording with easy editing on your computer. If your computer had a Firewire port, which was taken for granted on Macs back then and relatively common on PCs as well, but is virtually unheard of today. Now I'm thinking on a track, but it's DCR 8C52, and I hear the 52 is only the number for the US. It might be different if you're in Europe. I think it's the 51 in Europe. Anyway, um, yeah, for the proof, here's the 52. Mini DV camcorders stuck around long enough that the later models had a widescreen display and could be easily switched between 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratios. Aaron! <laughs> Sorry! This is my second time around the house because I first forgot to put the tape in. Second time it wasn't recording. <laughs> Actually, this video camera is so good, it's part, you can see it perfectly. For those who wanted ease of playback on their home entertainment system, there were DVD camcorders, such as the one I'm using right now. These recorded onto many 3-inch recordable DVDs, although they were only good for about 20 minutes of recording time at the highest quality setting. And if you used the cheaper, non-rewritable discs, whatever you recorded was permanent. You could not go back and erase or record over your footage. Oh, I know. I know, Mikey. Good, you. Oh, I'm waiting for you to I get up just, behind the camera and get on the dance floor. I was just... It's fun to stay at For those who wanted the longest possible recording time, there were camcorders which recorded onto miniature 1.8 inch hard drives, the same kind used in iPods. Although these were a common source of confusion because people saw HDD on the label and assumed that meant it recorded in high definition, when in fact many of them were standard definition. And for the burgeoning YouTube age, flash memory camcorders which recorded onto SD cards had finally become mainstream, although Sony steadfastly stuck to their proprietary memory stick format. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling. We're live. He's got nothing to say. I'm really pretty. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, stand up straight. The music got way better. Oh, 
Standard definition camcorders often made up for their lack of high resolution video with other features such as extra long optical zoom or even a 5.1 channel surround sound microphone, a feature which online video platforms still don't support 15 years later. For those who wanted to keep their options open, there were combination models such as this Hitachi camcorder which can record video onto either an internal hard drive or mini DVDs and can also take still photos onto an SD card. High definition camcorders were an increasing part of the market at the time, although they were still very expensive, with many models costing at or above a thousand dollars. The most popular format for HD video recording was HDV, which recorded high definition video onto the same inexpensive tapes that many DV camcorders used. How close, how close does it focus? For those who wanted high definition at a slightly less astronomical price, Sony had a short-lived series of Handycams which recorded HD video onto mini DVDs, although they could fit a whopping 11 minutes of 1920 by 1080 footage onto one disc. Hitachi was even crazy enough to make camcorders which recorded HD video onto mini recordable Blu-ray discs, which are just about impossible to find. I'd love to demonstrate this unique camcorder for you, but unfortunately it doesn't work. All I get out of the lens is a completely black image, sometimes with some lines and interference on it. The zoom works and I can even make a recording, but that's all you see. Oh, and if you had one of those Sony or Canon HD DVD camcorders which recorded onto regular DVDs, you needed a Blu-ray player in order to actually play the disc. Are you confused yet? Um, LTECs need to do this to survive. If an LTEC isn't able to master their core specialty and um, then find some of these additional niche um, you know, services, um, the, 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 the environment simply is not going to allow them uh, to exist in their market or CMS is not going to allow them to exist. High definition camcorders using hard drives or flash memory were also starting to become available, although you needed a fairly up to date and powerful computer in order to handle the then new AVC HD codec they used. iMovie 08 was the first version to support AVC HD video, although by default it downscaled it to 960 by 540 resolution for better performance and easier editing. Apple claimed you probably won't notice the difference, and at the time that may have been true because YouTube didn't support HD until December 2008, and that was only 720p at a relatively low bitrate. For those who couldn't afford high definition, there were some interesting stopgap products available at the time, such as camcorders which recorded in standard definition and then upscaled it to 1080p through an HDMI output. If I connect it to the HDMI port of my TV, it shows a 1080p 60 resolution. But when I pull up one of the files that the camera actually recorded and check the properties, it's just standard definition 720 by 480 video, not high definition. To provide a more affordable option for real HD video recording, some of the brands known for cheap, low quality video cameras tried making real camcorders, such as this model by DXG, which records full HD 720p or 1080i video, has an actual glass lens with autofocus, optical zoom, and image stabilization. It even has an external microphone input, although there's no accessory shoe to mount it, and despite what it claims, the built-in microphone is only mono, not stereo. You can see this is true HD video with optical zoom, autofocus, and image stabilization. Amazing, but it only looks good under this bright studio lighting. But under more normal indoor lighting, it completely falls on its face.
Compare that to an old-fashioned mini-DV camcorder, which still produces a usable image. In 2008, the market for camcorders was so competitive that you had over 50 different models to choose from from the top four brands. Sony was the leader with 16 models in their 2008 lineup, including 10 standard definition and 6 high definition camcorders, ranging from $249 to $1,399. Canon was next with 15 models to choose from in 2008, including 9 standard definition and 6 high definition models, ranging from $249 to $1,299. Next was JVC with 14 models of camcorders in their 2008 lineup, including 8 standard definition and 6 high definition models, ranging from $230 to $1,799. And Panasonic was lagging behind with only 11 models in their 2008 lineup of camcorders, including 8 standard definition and 3 high definition models, ranging from the $280 PVGS90 mini DV tape camcorder I have here to their $1100 HDC HS9 high definition camcorder. The most popular camcorder models were even available in a variety of different colors. But today, 15 years later, the consumer demand for camcorders has been absolutely decimated by competition from smartphones, DSLRs, and action cams. The only company still offering a full range of consumer-grade camcorders under $1,000 is Panasonic. Sony only has one model of Handycam under a grand, which has been on the market unchanged since 2015, while Canon and JVC no longer offer any new camcorders under $1,000. You may see inexpensive new 4K camcorders from well-known brands like Vivitar and Minolta, but those have nothing to do with the cameras those brands made decades ago. They're just licensed and put on cheap Chinese video cameras. And remember the features I praised this DXG camcorder for having? Well you won't find any new Vivitar or Minolta camcorder with all those features. The same thing is true of all the new camcorders that are flooding Amazon from brand names you've never heard of before. Even if they're tarted up with accessories like a big handle, a big lens hood, and a big external microphone, they're really just badly upscaled toy cameras cosplaying as a professional camcorder. If you'd like to use any of the types of old camcorders I've shown in this video, there are a lot of tutorials on how to try to get them to work with a modern computer, but I think your best bet is to use an old camcorder camcorder with an old computer, an era appropriate one from the mid to late 2000s, which is old enough to still have a DVD drive and a firewire port, also known as IEEE 1394 or iLink, but new enough to run Windows 7 and a copy of Windows Movie Maker version 2012. It's a very rudimentary program, but it's easy to use, good enough to get you started, and knows how to properly deal with all the digital video formats I showed here, both standard definition and high definition. And if you're thinking this video was just an excuse to show off my collection of obsolete camcorders that I got on eBay and at thrift stores, and some of the footage I found on them, you're right. You ever wonder how he gets all the girls? Like... I don't know, I guess some girls are just into jerks. Good thing they're not the only choice.